This is a Guide Your Light Network production, creating podcasts with purpose. My name is Kiani Mills, and this podcast is created to help you, to help you see, feel, and experience the human side of business. I'm a business owner, an entrepreneur, and a parent. And like many who have traveled this path before me, I've been through the lows of the lows and the gut-wrenching pain. But I've been through the triumphs and the wins and the indescribable highs, all of which I consider to be my lessons in the school of life. On this show, we are going to start some conversations to ignite ignite new new world world ideas ideas into some very old age businesses. So if you're a leader, a business mind, or an entrepreneur, get ready to think, act, and feel differently so that we can all reach a new level of business success together. So what are you waiting for? Welcome back to this week's episode of She Can Humanize Business, a podcast that I created to bring our crazy corporate world in with our human world And instead of having two separate spaces where we wear two separate hats, where we have to be two different kinds of people, we bring them into one. And part of my mission on this earth is to bring those people forth who are embodying this method, who are living their lives in line with their businesses and their businesses in line with their lives. Because as we know, business is life and life is business. So I'm very, very excited and grateful to have the beautiful Shannon on the show today. Welcome, Shannon. Thank you so much, beautiful woman. It's so great to be here. I know, and it's amazing to see you again, even if it's not in real person, it's it's close yeah. enough. Yay, technology. I know, <laughs> I know. Thank God. What would you do without it? Seriously. <laughs> no, I would be so, every day, like where I'm like, you know, I'm like sitting gratitude. Yeah, what am I grateful for? And every single day I'm like, I'm so grateful for my phone and my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much too, because so many people are like, put the phone away, stop working, which... I get it. Absolutely. We need downtime. Yeah. But not that long ago, these things didn't exist. I remember those days so clearly. And it's really interesting that you just brought that up. My partner and I were sitting in bed last night. We um, facilitated an event yesterday and we we're sitting in bed and he was like, I've really got to get my post up. I've got to do some social stuff. And I was like, yep, sweet. And we're like, daggy, my hair's a mess. His head's a mess. Baggy shirts, just laying in bed. And we're like, all right. And smashed out like a quick hour of work. Went and had dinner and had some beautiful connection time. Came back and then he jumped on a live on Instagram. And I'm like, this is flow. And like, we were reflecting on it when we went to sleep. He was like, I really love that we can just do that together. And because we work in the same industries, it's just like, yeah, it's just this like knowing, yeah, cool. You got to do the thing. I got to do the thing. Let's get it done and then come back to each other. And it was so great. Yeah. Because you're right. Like once upon a time, it was like, oh, work finishes, leave it at the office, come home, be a human. Yeah. (laughs) It's not the way it is anymore. (laughs) No, it's really not. And it's like finding that balance and that flow and being okay with just stuff happening and juggling whenever it happens. Absolutely. I feel like that juggle for a lot of people, you either thrive in the juggle, which I know I do, or Mm. the juggle is almost like, what's a word, like intrusive. It's yeah. like, this is our time. This is the block from 6 till 7 p.m. Nothing comes in between that. And when it does, it's like disappointment, you know, expectations are shattered. It's, you know, yeah. bad attitudes, things like that. Whereas for those who are in flow and, and, and enjoy the, the chaos in the juggle, it's like, yeah, cool, don't stress. That 6 becomes a 7 or a 7.30 and then we've got our time and you kind yeah. of bounce Absolutely. And my thing is, is like, if the six becomes 7.30, but I can get everything done before that 7.30, instead of hitting the six and going, oh, I'll come back to that. I'm like, oh, if I could just get all of that done and we get to be together at 7.30, I'm so okay with that. Because you go into it. Yeah. Presents, yeah. Rather than like subconsciously writing lists in your mind of what you've got to do when you go back again or carrying the guilt of going, oh shit, I'm not doing what I was supposed to do. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, oh God, I didn't get back to that client far out. I haven't even done my schedule for the week. Oh my God, I didn't book that podcast with Kiani. Like (laughs) that was me two weeks ago. (laughs) Sorry, I'm just reminding you. (laughs) Thank you. No, but it it is. So I like to start all of my shows with the same question, and that is, what does humanizing business mean to you? 
Oh, I love that question. So for me, it's being okay with making mistakes. And this has been a huge one for me because hello, like perfectionist in the past. And if something didn't work, it was a catastrophe for a little while. And I really recognize that it's actually so great and so beautiful to be in the expansion of failure because failure is actually only feedback. And so when you can jump into the space of feedback, how can you be in the expansion and the growth of your failure? And so that's where that human comes into business for me, where it's like, oh, I'm human. Oh, I'm running a business and I'm the human behind the business. Of course, there's going to be mistakes. Of course. And I learn from them and I grow and my business grows from them too. Oh, I love that so much. Absolutely. Like hits home. So I'm a recovering perfectionist. I get it. Like, I don't know if I'm ever going to actually be recovered, but I'm in recovery and I'm trying really hard. But there was one really pivotal statement that was made that I've latched onto. And it was that, yeah, there is no failure. There's only learning or winning. Yep. So if we don't win, we learn. If we don't learn, we win. And if we learn, then we win. Great. We've gotten double whammy. It's a win-win. It's like, oh, I actually win even when I'm learning. Because yep. learning is always winning. Absolutely. And we never know what we're going to learn. Yes. I love that so much. <laughs> oh, you've given me all the feels. Tell me a little bit about what is going on in your beautiful world at the moment. Oh, my world is really actually quite exciting at the moment because I've just launched a new program, which is really exciting. And because it's the end of the year, I've got all of this energy of like, what am I going to do in 2024? Like I'm such a chameleon that I'm like I want to do all the things whilst remembering that my niche is also very important too so I'm like how can I still be and do all the things whilst nurturing what it is that is my mission and so my mission is very much like in the sensuality sexuality feminine embodiment space and I really enjoy bringing women home to their bodies and creating that balance in the busy life and I also like to look at my life like well I'm a life coach for women And so when I say I'm a life coach for women, then I can be all the things because I love being all the things. (laughs) And so for me, stepping into the new year, I've got a lot of energy towards that balance again as like bringing women home. And so in the new year, I'm relaunching all of my retreats. And so I have had a break from retreats um, sort of this year between March and November. Um, At the beginning of the year, I ran three retreats between like the beginning and like March. So it's a very quick turnaround to run retreats like Mm -hmm. that. Uh, And then I ran an overnight retreat in November. So I had quite a big break from it. And it's really given me a lot of insight into what I really freaking love. And I love that in-person connection. I love just being with women and in that community of what happens when we're all together. And so I'm really bringing that into the new year. And I've set dates for consistent retreats over the span of the year whilst also really nurturing the thing I'm mostly passionate about in my whole life, and that's relationships and intimacy. And so, yeah, with the flourishing of my own relationship right now, it's giving me a lot of energy towards how I want to show up in the space with relationships as well. And I always have been of the belief like self first, then others. And that's the beautiful evolution of relationship. When we cultivate the deepest relationship with ourselves, then everything flourishes after that. And so really bringing that into the new year as well with couples retreats as well. Yeah. Wow. That is incredible. And I loved the word that you used at the start, which was how you were saying you wanted to stay within your niche. Yeah. And that was the feminine sexuality. And that is for us women, such an important piece of the puzzle that I would probably say for 90% of women in this world, it is either a taboo subject, yep. one that is frowned upon, one mm-hmm. that is not spoken about over the dinner table, mm-hmm. and one that if if any way we have been shamed of or for in the past. Yeah, absolutely. So you bringing this niche, as you call it, to me this is like as a woman, this is like woman 101. I love this. I love this space. And Knowing a little bit about you and your background, to me, it just makes sense why this is your niche. Absolutely. So would you mind sharing with the listeners what led you into this niche and why it's so important for you to cultivate this safe space for women? 
Yeah, absolutely. And so I spent 15 years in the adult entertainment industry. I worked as a showgirl, a stripper, however you like to use the label. And in that time, I had a marriage. I was actually very lucky in the way that the industry didn't affect me having connection. However, I still really manifested not great relationships. So I had two domestic violent relationships within my time in the industry. And the industry became my like emotional outlet. It was a great way for me to make money. I've always been great at making money. So that was great. I got to nurture that part of me that just had that business, that drive, that go, go, go to make money and create like extraordinary things for my life. And it also gave me this emotional outlet, this like way to create connection and use my seductress energy to get what I wanted and then come home and have not great relationships. So then I kept going to work to keep getting nurtured in what I wasn't getting at home. And whilst I never actually engaged in sexual activity at work, I still got enough attention at work. Yeah, it was feeding yeah. that part that wasn't being nurtured at home. Absolutely, absolutely. And it also gave me enough of an outlet to get something at work that kept me in my relationships longer too. And so, the, yeah, like the support that I got from my ex-partners for the job that I did kept me in the job and that what I got from the job kept me in the relationships. Wow. So it's like a, like a double yeah. sword. Absolutely. And it kept me in this cycle, which I haven't really spoken in too much about that. And then through that, my, my second domestic violent relationship was, I call him the trifecta. So I had emotional, physical, and sexual abuse fruit through that relationship. And from that, when I stepped out of that relationship, I was literally a shell of myself. When I left my marriage, I was quite empowered because I was like, no, nah, this isn't for me. Time to move on. Here I go. Power to me. Look out world. And then didn't heal the relationship cycle. So ended up in another one who was the trifecta of all things. And yeah, that stripped me away, just stripped away, stripped away, stripped away, stripped away to the point where, yeah, when I left that relationship, I was just like, oh God, who am I? Like, like, I don't even know what I like. And I, the only thing I knew about myself was I loved dogs. And so I had dogs <laughs> and they were beautiful and they really helped me through a lot. And Feeling too. Absolutely. And then it was uh, just a random conversation that I had with someone about like, I went through what I call my slut city stage. And so I was just going out and getting named it. That's so yeah, good. <laughs> so good. Like, slut city stage. Um, and I had someone reflect back to me and like, it was just like this passing snarky comment, but it really landed for me. And it was, yeah, it's great to go out and get what you want without getting too close. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm doing. And I was, masculine like wounded masculinizing my sex life mm. and so it's not surprising though um when we are a, a victim in a domestic violence situation yep. we lose our sense of identity yep. for a lot of us we also become really numb on the inside so those sexual encounters and slut city stage we're yep. not looking for deep connection we're looking to just maybe feel something Absolutely. Or feel nothing and just start to try and become human again. It's like, how do we just crawl out of the hole enough to be seen? Yeah. So that we're still safe and we can I actually had this experience and I don't know why this is coming up, but I was laying on the beach not long ago and I was watching this crab crawl out of its hole and it would come up, have a little look around, something would rustle, it would go back in. Yeah. It would come out, have a look around and go back in. And there was this really deep analogy in me of like, fuck, I was that crab mm. where it was like almost like hiding in plain sight but yeah. never allowing myself to come out far enough that anyone would actually get, you know, be able to grab me or, you know, yeah. <laughs> kind of like protection bubble. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm totally not surprised that that was the demeanour that was leading that time frame, but the awareness that you have to have had for that to land, that's that's incredible. How did that feel for you when when that statement was said? Oh, it just, it, sl it slammed me. Like a, that was my Mack truck moment. Mm. 
that was like I'd had plenty of feathers and I had a couple of bricks and I was like whack with the truck and I was like oh my god that is literally what I'm doing and I had this moment of like I'm also using and abusing men whilst they were getting great things out of it like I wasn't abusing them harshly but I was abusing them in the way that like I wasn't allowing them to be anything other than a climbing pole because (laughs) it was literally like me going like I can still get what I want from you and maintain the power by walking away or kicking you out of my bed or leaving your bed, whatever it was. So it was this sense of entitlement and power that was coming from this really wounded place. And so then I went the complete opposite end of the spectrum and decided to do celibacy. And and it was actually perfect because through that, I was like, I'm not of the belief that we become so disconnected from our body that we choose to be celibate without anything at all. Like I'm not a nun. And so I was like, there has to be something that I can do for myself. So then I ended up in a, in a, I did a one session with a sexologist and that was really beautiful. It was this moment of like, well, yes, there is healing to do here. And you have to do that within yourself, through your body, through your own pleasure to awaken these traumas and things within you to release them. And so did breath work. I started with breath work, which was really potent. And then I went like next level and I went into a self-pleasure modality And I went into it for myself first because I was like, I'm going to do this for me and really like connect with my body. And fall back in love with something that you haven't loved for a long time. Absolutely. And then when I was in that, I was like, oh my gosh, because I was in a a container with a lot of women. Mm -hmm. I was like, far out. So many women need this. Mm -hmm. There is, I think there was 30 of us at one point in that container. And I was like, this Mm -hmm. is one container in one year of 30 women in one place. Yeah. One place. And there was so much trauma for all of us in different ways. There was some, like, I don't believe that anyone's trauma is bigger than the other because it still feels the same in the body. However, there were women who had experienced deep, deep, deep abuse. And there were women who had experienced just, you know, a little blip in time, but in the body and the way that their reactions and emotions and everything came through, I was like, wow, like, Every woman has experienced a trauma of some sort. Yeah, especially around that sexual um, sexual energy, sexual pleasure, sexual trauma, yeah. sexual, even just moving into our sexuality as children. I know so many women at the moment um, who have spoken into because my daughter's recently gone through getting her period. And yeah. a lot of women, when I've spoken to them, I'm like, I'm not ready for this period talk stuff yet, but I'm I'm nailing it. It's great. Right. So many women say, I never got the talk. My parents never spoke to me about it. I got pads on my bed and that was it. Yeah. And for them, that is traumatizing for them because yeah. they didn't know what it meant to become a woman. They thought there was something wrong with them before they figured out that it was normal. Yeah. You know, that a falling event recently. And it was a beautiful event where we had mothers and daughters and we spoke about womb cycles and coming into your bleed. And it was so beautiful. I was like, oh, all schools need this. Mm. And I heard a story of a woman and I've seen this and heard about this in movies, but I actually witnessed this in a woman. And she was the one who never got any education whatsoever, never got told anything and then got her bleed and thought she was dying. Oh, wow. And I was like, gosh, like that actually happens. Like it's not just a thing in the movies. Like that is real. And I've been teaching about womb cycles for a long time now for many years and even in all of that, I've never met someone who's had that experience yet. And that was really eye-opening for me because I was like, wow, like there, even if you have the most amazing sex life in your adult life, just getting your bleed can create enough tension in your body and yeah. enough of a trauma for you and your sexuality. Yep. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. And this, I love what you said about, you know, there's no such big thing as big or small trauma. It's all relative to the individual because we store the emotions in our body and that is our body. It's relative to what's real for us and there's definitely no judgment in that space. But So yeah. am I fair to say that this is where the path that led you to deciding to become a life coach and working specifically with women came from? Yeah, absolutely. Like it was just through my own healing, through my own journey, through recognizing that I wasn't the only one. And then I just was like, wow, I have to do this. I have to do this. Like, this is what I have to do for the world. (laughs) And there's almost a part in it too, where it's like, I was gifted with these situations that are very unfortunate. Yeah. 
to then be of an ability, which you are, to then help others on the other side. Absolutely. And I do get a lot of people asking me, like, how can you be so grateful for your past? Like I I get so many people, I I spoke about this on my social media this morning. Like I get messages like, how are you so happy all the time? I'm like, I am human. I have my days where I'm not happy. We're also in a full moon at the moment. So God knows what's going to happen in a minute. (laughs) I know, literally. And I'm like, I'm a Gemini as well. So we're a full moon in Gemini. I'm like, guys, this is why I'm talking so well today. I'm like, I'm on. And... (laughs) I have my days too. However, I look at my life where I'm at right now and I have an incredible relationship, like the most divine relationship I've ever thought possible in my life. My business is growing exponentially. I have the most amazing friends around me. I'm connected with beautiful women like yourself that I, like we're working right now. Like what even is this life? I know. Like, this is work. And yeah, and so I look back and I'm like, if I didn't, have my life as a stripper and experience going up and down financially the way that I did creating businesses, some that worked, some that didn't having really friggin' awful relationships that landed me in the spaces of the healing that I've chosen to go into. I wouldn't be who I am right now. And I wouldn't have the resources that I have to actually, like, it's one thing to go and learn a modality and recycle the learning. There's a whole piece of embodiment that happens too. And integration. Oh my gosh. And so it's like, I have the lived experience to go with the modalities, to go with the embodiment, to go with the mindset and and so on. The ripple effect goes. And that I think creates that passion because it's like, I've been there and I'm now here. And I know the magic that happens when you just go all in and you go, you know what? I'm the problem. Mm. It is me creating the cycles because this was me. Mm. It is me that chose this. It was me that chose not to end this cycle and it's up to me to do the work to actually go from there to here. And, yes, there's some mountains and there's some troughs and there's some bits and pieces and there's some muggy water and clear water along the way and all of it's so beautiful and perfect when you land where you want to land and you go, oh, okay, I've landed here and I want more, so let's keep going, and you yeah. just keep going and it's so beautiful. And so that's where I'm like, I'm so happy. I Like when someone comes to me and they're like, I'm really triggered. I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're one of those ones. I call you guys the sadists. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's only because you can see the beauty on the other side. You're like, this is going to be beautiful. I understand it's shit right now. But trust me, you can you can see into the future in those yeah. situations. So it's yeah. not you know, not, not full on sadistic, but yeah. there's an element there. Yeah. When I come to you crying, you'd be like, oh, yes. <laughs> cause that's the breakthrough. Like my partner and I call it the breakdown to the breakthrough. So about, I think about two, two, three weeks ago when I was initially going to book this podcast with you. And I was like, I went through a couple of days of breakdowns where I was like, oh my God, I've hit this like financial winter and like you know what does this look like how am I gonna navigate this and I was like I have to just feel all of it and so I had the breakdown and then I had the breakthrough and then like this the other day my partner had his breakdown to breakthrough and when my clients have their breakdowns I'm like yeah the breakthrough's coming <laughs> yeah and it's such an important thing and I literally just spoke about this I'm doing some course content recording yeah. and it's that minute that you get to the edge of comfortable that yeah. you go oh that's uncomfortable I don't want to do it or there's a Um, resistance or a block or a self-doubt or one of those things that you're like oh no I'm just going to stay in the in the comfy area it's like that's the moment in time when you step forwards that's the moment in time that you show up that you step into those comfortables and become that next version of you and likewise the emotions of feeling um oh what are they of course I can't remember them right now confusion and frustration Confusion and frustration are that brink of Mm -hmm. the difference between a breakdown, going from breakdown to breakthrough. And every time someone comes to me, especially in business, they're like, I'm just so confused, but I'm so frustrated. I'm like, yes. (laughs) Yes, we're doing it, people. Call me in a week. I can't wait. (laughs) (laughs) It's the best. Yeah, it is. It is because, as you said, it's lived experience. You've seen what's possible on on the other side. And for a lot of us, it just takes choosing us. Yeah, and also having the right people in your corner that 
if you come to them and you're like, ah, everything is like, ah, like it's like you want to burn everything to the ground and run away. You have the right people that are like, I'm really excited for you for what's coming after this. Yeah. Or it goes, okay, if we burn it all to the ground, it looks like this, 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 that. Is that what you want? Not like do it, go on. It's is that what you actually want? Like asking the great questions that is like, well, you know, if you decided to sell your house and sell your car and do all your things, like, is that what you want? Do you, do you want to go down that path? And it's like, no. How does that feel in the body? Yeah, it's like I feel better or worse than where we are right now. Literally, and it's like, you know, if you just go one more day, just mm. go one more day and see what happens. Feel it now, allow yourself to feel it because the feeling is very real in your body. So be in that, embody that. And allow it to work through you and let's have a sleep and go one more day. Absolutely. And I feel that this message is really important, um, especially for the women coming from corporate background. We spend and have generationally spent a very long time fighting the men, fighting the masculine to be enough, to be recognized, to be paid the same as them, to be heard. We've spent so long fighting and I feel like we're now coming into a beautiful time of the world where women are rising and women are being empowered. And part of me thinks that men are ready for a freaking break. They're all like, you know what, ladies, take it on. We've been carrying this shit for so long. Granted, they didn't share. But now I feel like there's this really beautiful evolution happening where women women are accepted. Women are able to be in every profession. In most professions, we are being paid equally and fairly, not all, but most. So I do feel like where we're women in this area potentially um, are in their lives where they're thinking, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling totally empowered. I'm not feeling 100% happy in my relationship. I'm not feeling 100% happy in my body. I don't like what I see in the mirror. I don't like the relationships I have with my children. These are beautiful opportunities to take a look at how much you love yourself. Because as we mm. know, we are a reflection. What we feel on the inside, we reflect outwards. So it's not always that your kids are jerks or your husband's an asshole or the boss is a dick. It may be <laughs> that we have some unresolved things inside of us. Yeah. Absolutely. And this was exactly why I wanted to get Shannon on the show because this is a gentle and beautiful place to start um, for any woman, no matter where you're at in your life, whether you've done any healing work at all ever, whether you've even heard any of these terms, it doesn't matter. Um, it is such a safe space. Shannon creates a beautiful environment for women. And as I said, I've met her energetics in human and it's something that it left an imprint on me. It really did. It left a massive imprint on me. And I feel that that was just something really important that I wanted to share so that any listeners, if it's an uncomfortable topic, step into it. If it's feeling a little bit, you know, taboo, step out of your comfort zone. Yeah, the taboo is fun. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I was definitely one of those people that was like, don't talk about it, don't want to know about it, pretend it doesn't happen. Dirty word, not happening in any way. I was like, nope, I'm a nun. Literally, I was like, no, not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's just part of our human that has been blocked. So for those women, what would you share with them? Encouragements or pieces of advice? What would you say to them? That you're safe and that safety is an inside job. And the more you start looking for safety outside of yourself, the less you're going to find and the more lack of safety you're going to have within. And so it's really befriending your triggers, making sense of your taboos, why you have them, where they've come from and going, you know what, like, is that actually me? I had this moment this morning and it was a really beautiful moment. So me now, I have so much love and respect for all religion I actually really geek out over different religions and making sense of them and where they've come from and how they all represent. And what I've come to learn and know is they all actually beautifully marry into each other. And there's just a lot of layers and humanizing that's come along the way. And I had this moment this morning, I was walking 
and I was actually like doing all my social media stuff and I walked past this beautiful old man who was on a bike and he had like the bike helmet on with the the zip ties poking out the top you know like such a fuddy daddy and so cute and he yelled out to me and he's like have a beautiful morning you are so lovely and Jesus loves you and I was like oh oh my God, thank you. Like I just had this beautiful moment of like, what a lovely man. And me like, well, how old am I? 34. So me like 15 years ago would have been like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, geez, don't push your religion on me, you know? And I, that was me when I was a teenager. Yeah. And I just had this moment of like, oh my gosh, like, I just really received that. And in that moment, I'm using religion purposefully because it's a controversial controversial subject where it's like if you actually can open yourself so much to just receive that you're so safe in any given moment, you can recognize that there is a lot of conditioning and mine came from conditioning because I didn't grow up in a religious home. And I grew up hearing a lot of the stories around religion from my parents, beautiful, love them both. And then though there's a lot of stories that we hear from our parents and so when you look at, again, using religious um, purposefully in sexuality, there is a lot of taboo that comes from the re- from religion. Yeah. And so if you really look at it and then reflecting back on what I said before, is this actually mine or is it a conditioning? And can I be open enough? Just being open. You don't have to be, you can choose not to be vulnerable if you don't want to be vulnerable, but just be open. Be willing to be open and go, well, if it's not me, where did it come from? And if you know that, great. And if you don't, explore it and go, all right, how can I actually be so open that maybe I really like this? So in the sexuality world, like if there is a taboo that you're like, oh, no, no. It's like, is that actually your belief or is it a conditioning through someone else? So utilizing women's menstrual cycle, some men can get very grossed out by women's menstrual cycles. And I really, I've explored this quite a lot because I'm actually quite fascinated where that came from. And it comes from like, just this like one women not being empowered enough in their own bodies to just go, I'm bleeding. Yay. And actually like being in it and showing it and not having to hide our pads and tampons and period undies and not having to, you know, go to the toilet and carefully, quietly undo the wrapper so no one hears it, you know, all these little little things that we do. And then there's another big piece of like the men along the line who have gone, oh, no, you don't go near your mother at that time. Oh, no, you know, and like, oh, shit, she's bleeding. Don't go near it, you know, all of these things that then creates this like, continual conditioning of this wrong it's taboo you don't go near it when it's this and so really looking back going along the line of where the conditioning came from is it yours no great can you actually start to be so open that you explore it and so coming back to the original message of the safety is within you you are safe to explore all the things and if you need to externalize it as in find support outside of you the support is there and be brave and ask for it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's really beautiful. <laughs> I was so enthralled in that story that I have no idea what I'm going to ask next. And I love, yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I do. I go on tangents and like I do eventually circle back. <laughs> no, I love it as well. Like it, especially for me, I learn so much in these situations. Yeah. And you're right. There has been so many areas humans not just women humans have been conditions or indoctrinated or beliefs or rules put on us that we don't even know are there we don't know they're there you know what's the what's the saying is like you got to look left then right and then left again before you cross the road yes i truly believe that's safe but who made that up where'd it come from it's like being curious around where those and for me it's like when a negative emotion pops up Oh, there's a negative emotion. Why? What's the rule that I've created that is attached to that negative emotion? Yeah. And generally it's that they, external, have done something wrong or have not met my expectations. It's yes. like, oh, shit, why did I? Who, who am I to put that on them? Yep. And also realizing that all I'm doing is limiting my opportunity for happiness and joy and growth because I'm out here judging everybody else. I literally like, it's so great. 
me in the last few years, I've been reflecting on why I respond the way I respond. Where does it come from? And then just the other day, like my partner was like, he's got this list that he wants to achieve before a certain age kind of thing. And he's reading his list and he goes, oh yeah, do he wants to do the Mount Everest base camp. And I was like, oh, that might be a thing that you do on your own, babe. And then I was like, oh, why did I choose that? Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, actually, like, why do I not want to do that? And then I sat there and I'm like, okay, I'm reflecting on this. Like, what is it? And like, it's fear. What am I scared of? And then it's actually like going down the track. And then I got to a point where I'm like, I actually would really love to do that. That would be cool. And I just like actually like looking at what it is that scares you using fear because I just said that and going, okay, why am I scared? What is it that I'm scared of? If it's like, if we look at relationships, if you're someone, this was me, who's like, oh yeah, no, that relationship definitely, that's not for me. And then it's like, when did I decide that? Why is it not for me? And who am I to decide that? Absolutely. And then I like reflect on that. I'm like, I actually want all of that. I want all of the smush. I want all of the love. I want all of the connection. I want it all. Like I, I'm having this human experience and I want to experience as many things as I possibly can in this life. So why am I limiting myself and for what purpose? Mm. And the realization that you'll come to is that 99% of the time it comes from fear. Absolutely. It does. And that fear is just trying to keep you safe. Yeah. But, and I'm similar in relationship, I've been like, oh, don't like do the PDA stuff. And deep down, oh my God, I want someone to love me so much that they grab me in the middle of the street in front of everybody and show everybody how much they love me. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. I was too afraid to ask for that or say that out loud, because if it doesn't happen, then I'm going to be disappointed. Absolutely. my fear protecting me. Absolutely. And that was me, the exact same story in the past is like, oh, well, if I don't, then I won't get rejected. So I'll just reject it. It. Yep. And it's like, actually, no. And like, literally like relationship is so important. And it's when you can be so bold and brave to ask for what you want, you will actually attract the person who will meet you in that. And now I'm like, I'm here for all the PDA. I want it all. I want you to grab me, touch my bum, kiss me, hold my hand, like all of it, all of it or nothing. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Oh, I love that so much. <laughs> um, hey, you mentioned something before and you were ta- and I can't exactly remember the topic because as we know, I don't remember what I talk about in these episodes. They just flow out of me. But you did mention something before about being in winter. Ah, and yes. For me, triggered something in my mind because it's something that Tony Robbins talks about a lot mm-hmm. about being in winter. So I feel like let's yeah. go down that path. Yeah. So in life we have seasons. So we have obvious the obvious seasons that we live in in our world. We have spring, summer, autumn, winter, and then we have internal seasons. And so for a woman in her menstrual cycle, your ovulation would be your inner summer or your bleed would be your inner winter. So when you're in between your, um, your summer and your winter, you're in friggin' luteal my brain I'm like hey where am I I just said it so backwards um and that would be your inner autumn and then if you're coming out of your bleed into your summer that's your inner spring it's your your, your follicular phase um we also have this in business mm-hmm. yay. yay we do <laughs> and so if you're an entrepreneur or someone who's like running the business running the show you'll recognize that you'll have these highs and lows if you're a coach or anyone who works in sales, you have peak sales and lower sales. And so your peak is your, your business summer and your lows are your business winter. And that was where, yeah, I hit a bit of a winter recently and I was like, oh my gosh, this is very uncomfortable. This is very uncomfortable. And I'd recognized some mistakes that I had made that had also contributed to my winter. So like the winter will happen naturally and then you can be an even more magical human and you can create things that will add to the winter. Absolutely. And this is something that I speak to about with my business clients is in that, first of all, identifying what season you are in and then knowing that, no, you don't plant all your seeds in the peak of summer. You've got to wait. So you've got to do the actions according to the season. Just because we're in winter doesn't mean we go and blow out some massive ass marketing campaign. Why? Because that's coming from lack. Yeah. We're going to be coming from a needy place. Yeah. Instead, we prepare. Winter's about foraging. It's about buckling down, refining, making sure that we're looking at all the nooks and crannies and getting everything right so that when we come out of winter, 
we can then start to lift the spirits and and bring a message from a really beautiful space. Mm-hmm. And I love the way that you linked in. Is there a men's cycle? I know women have a cycle. Is there a men's cycle too? Absolutely. So men's is so fun and they're very way more subtle than ours. <laughs> so theirs is a 24-hour cycle, whereas ours is like a month cycle. Holy crap, so they go through this shit daily. <laughs> daily. It, but they don't. For, for a man who's on like a typical sleep routine, or actually even if they do night shift, it would just be the other way around. However, when a man wakes up, he's in his inner spring. So he's just woken up. He's fresh. He's like, oh, yep, cool. My energy levels are starting to rise. Sweet, sweet. He'll hit midday and the peak of his energy will happen. So that's his inner summer in the middle of the day. That's like, yeah, I've got all the energy. I can do all the things. He's on, he's going. And then in the afternoon, so I'm going to utilize, say like, construction ladies and men anyone who um works in that space you know you come home from work and maybe a man is is irritable doesn't really want to talk he just wants to come home maybe have a beer and sit on the couch he wants to zone the fuck out doesn't really want to have to deal with anything maybe he gets a bit moody and is a bit like I'm going to clean things and then when I'm done cleaning then I'll sit down or maybe it's like I'm going to prep my stuff for tomorrow I'm going to prep my lunch don't talk to me don't mm -mm -mm -mm," whatever it is right and maybe you're at home going like, I just want to connect with you. Why? Is I know. <laughs> just love me. I haven't seen you love all day. Me. I haven't seen you all day. And they're just like, just give me a friggin' minute. Right. So that's their inner autumn, which is also for reference, ladies, the week before we bleed. It's the crazy week where we don't want to talk, where we don't want to do anything, where we just want to be left alone. Maybe we're getting all the shit done because we're about to bleed and we don't want to do anything when we bleed. Right. So it's the same. Their inner winter is when they sleep. <laughs> they're like big bears they are and this is why they i i men most men pass out pretty freaking hard at night and they're out right so that's their inner winter which is when we also bleed which is when we just want to lay down and sleep all the time too mm. wow yeah. i <laughs> love that yeah. that's got to be the most incredible representation of understanding the way the male and females work especially yeah. for a relationship and I know even when I'm looking at my children, yeah. I pick them up from school and I'm like, how was your day? What did you do today? How was your lunch? Who would you play with? Blah, blah. And they're like, don't talk to me. Overloaded. It's been big day. It's... <laughs> I'm like, just come on. like. <laughs> but it makes so much sense, especially I've got two teenagers. Um, yeah. One female, one male. Kobe, male. Man, he's autumn is so obvious yeah. and all he wants to do is just sit home in the car, sit on his phone, go home, play his games. He'll come and talk around dinner time, social, food, and then he's back you know, straight yeah. to bed. Yeah. So this is so cool even as parents to reference this to our children. Absolutely. And it helps with navigating your relationship. So if you're like, okay, whilst I want to have all of the love and connection as soon as he walks in the door or she walks in the door, maybe like I just get to give them a minute and be okay with it, even though I'm like bursting at the seams to see my lover. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Yeah. Time for us to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just got a vision of like a really happy puppy dog. <laughs> yeah. I. That's how I'm like, I'm like that. But for me, it's like, okay, I know that when my partner comes in, he just wants to be, we're on a similar schedule. However, if I was to reflect on my past relationships with my tradie exes, it's like, they come in and I'm like, hi, ho, <laughs> I'm I'm <laughs> <laughs> are you hungry? What do you need? You know, and it's like, give them what they need and then just go and amuse myself for a bit while they take a minute. But why the fuck haven't we ever been taught this? This is this really important? <laughs> There's so many things that we're not taught that is important. I oh want to actually God. bring so much sexual, um, edu- different new age of sexual education to school because I'm like, there's so many things that we're not taught. Yeah, wow. That yeah. is like life change. I feel like that's like if anyone's listening in a relationship, Shannon's just saved your relationship, like literally relationship saved. <laughs> Do you know, I have to give this in this because this has actually blown my mind. So I am a relationship coach and my beautiful partner has been recently stepping into the relationship side of things a bit more. And (laughs) he actually blew my mind recently where he was like, you know, it would be really great for couples who struggle with communication is to just go out and buy a journal 
and like one partner just write down everything that needs to be said and then they have like a place in the house that is the journal spot and they put it in the journal spot and when the other partner is ready to do the thing they'll go and take the journal from the journal spot and read it and go okay I get to respond in my own time there's no time frame it could be days when they're ready they will write it in there and then they'll pop it back in the journal spot and I was like oh my god that is brilliant yeah wow actually brilliant and I feel like for a conscious connected couple that would be so safe yeah trusting that whatever you have to say will be received because the only time they're going to read it is when they're ready to receive it and then they will respond when they've had time to digest and then are ready to respond because as we know we all have you know we've all got love languages yeah, we've all got argument languages too. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and these oh, yeah. ones, these are the ones that get us in in a little bit of trouble, especially if you're a reactive language. Correct, correct. And I'm not. I'm a retreat. I'm like, nope, get me out of here. I need to process all this, and then I'll come back when I can talk level headed. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah, but then yeah, when you've got a reactive in front of you, he's like, I want to deal with this now. This will not be done until we've finished it and we're both okay and I'm like not gonna be okay yeah it's like you're not gonna get what you need out of me in this moment and so the reactivity is so great if you can take take it to the journal get it out write it all out it's giving you an outlet to get it out of your head and then also creating enough safety and space within yourself in your relationship that your partner absolutely will respond and you've just got to give them that moment to process it yeah, and it do, like that really does complement any of the argument styles. Yeah, I feel like he's nailed it. Yeah, I know. I was like, "You are brilliant. Thank you. I'll take that. I'm writing that down in my book." So, where's your journal corner? <laughs> I haven't needed one yet. Thank goodness. <laughs> I'm sure there will be one eventually. Mm, I love yeah. it. Maybe oh. I can write like a love note corner and just leave the. It can just be for love notes for now. I mean, yeah. if you can, if you can do that. Yeah. That's amazing. Maybe you need both. That's Journal true. corner on one side and love corner on the other side. Yeah. This is our conflict corner and this is our connection corner. <laughs> <laughs> My God. You know how there's those like feng shui apps that you can get and you can feng shui your house? Yep. You'd be like love yep. and what was it? Connection and conflicts your house. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, if I was to think about feng shui and this just landed for me, put the conflict corner somewhere where there's a door so it can go out the door. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> and if you need to go out the door, you can. <laughs> yep. Yeah. If you are in conflict and someone says, I need to go for a walk and you're the person that hounds them to not go for the walk, this was me in the past, let them just go for the walk mm-hmm. and let them come back to you from a regulated space. Space is the hardest thing to give someone, especially when we're coming from an abandonment wound because we don't want them to leave us. Yeah. Space is the I'm going to say probably the number one thing in in regulation when it comes to being able to share from that conscious connected space. Absolutely it is. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. You've been incredible. This time has gone so fast. I have so many more questions. I feel like we're going to have to do this again. Hopefully we can do one in person. That would be incredible. Yeah, I'll come up to you. I was going to say I'll come to you, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm always looking for an excuse to come up there. So oh, absolutely. I love it. I love it. So please share with everybody where can they find you um, and what have you got going on and coming up next year? Okay, so you can find me at shannon.hottes, H-O-T-T-E-S, on Instagram and www.shannonhottis.com. Um, next year I have in February launching my third round of my signature program called Radiance. It's an eight week group container for women where it's all about that feminine embodiment, all about womanhood, embracing your womb cycles, learning about your womb, your womb's wisdom, and also intertwining relationships. So really bringing in that relationship to self so you can have your ultimate relationships outside of yourself. And then we have an overnight retreat to celebrate at the end. So that launches in January. Uh, And then my retreats. So Horizon Retreats, I have one in March, one in July, and one in October. So they're my locked in things currently. Amazing. So anyone whose ears have pricked or you've become really uncomfortable, (laughs) Shannon is your gal. Uh, That February eight-week container, I would 
highly, highly recommend. It's a beautiful mm. space. As, as she said before, it's a safe space and you're with other women that are going through exactly what you're going through. So yeah. community is really important when you're doing any kind of healing. Absolutely. It is. It's the number one thing. And that was when I was going through my journey, I had a life coach on my own who changed my life and I've had coaches along the way on, on their own. But when I stepped into that group space, that first time changed my life. Yep. Exactly the same. Yep. I absolutely agree. Yeah. All right, my love, thank you so much for your time and your presence and your honesty and your vulnerability and sharing and yeah, gosh, I love you dearly. Thank you. I love you. And thank you to all of you for tuning in once again. This is the She Can Humanize Business Podcast. You can find us on all the podcast apps and stations and fun stuff. You know what to do. Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Stay happy and healthy, and I will speak to you again soon. Have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I would love to hear your feedback around what resonated and what key lessons and learnings that you took out of today's episode. You can find me on Instagram and on LinkedIn under the She Can Humanize Business podcast or Kiani Mills. I really hope that you were able to see, feel and experience a new way of humanizing business.